Well, happy Easter. It is Resurrection Sunday, and I am so glad to welcome you to the worship of God with the church at Harpeth Heights. It's Easter Sunday, and we know that many of you may have not ever worshipped uh, with our church. Perhaps you are just wandering by on the internet and you're checking it out, and we want you to feel welcome, and uh, honestly, we want to know that, you, that you're here. So what we have this week, like we've had the last few weeks, is we have a chat feature on the screen if you're online, whether it's Facebook or YouTube, and, and you'll see that you can participate online by, by chatting. Um, in, uh, in that, but you also will find embedded in there a, a response card that you can click on and fill out and get us a little information about yourself so that we can get back in touch with you. We would love, love to do that. This is a, a joy to gather together on such a day as this, but this is surely an Easter Sunday unlike any other that we've had at least in, in my lifetime. So we are only gathering online today. But the presence of God is no less real in our lives, and our need to hear the gospel is, is no less either. So I pray that you will settle in and enjoy worship, that you will be brought to the throne of grace as we look at the last of the seven sayings of Jesus from the cross, as we consider what it does mean, in fact, um, when Jesus says, It is finished. Each week we have taken a moment to pass the peace, which is what we like to do when we, when we gather together in person, and obviously it's a little different, but I'd like for you again to, to take your device, your phone, your iPad, whatever you're using, and take a moment to text someone, tell them the peace of Christ, uh, be with them, tell them you love them, tell them you're glad to be worshiping with them this morning. Take a moment to do this. Okay, as we continue in worship, I would like to offer this, this call to worship that we will actually be reading together. It will be on the screen as we begin. I will read uh, what is not in bold, and you read with me what is in bold. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Give thanks to the Lord, for the Lord is good. God's steadfast love endures forever. God's steadfast love endures forever. The Lord is our strength and might. Today, the Lord has become our salvation. The stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. This is God's handiwork, and it is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Hello, my name's Kate. And my name's Ruby. And we want to tell you a story from the Bible. This story is true, and it's from John 20. Well, on the first day of the week after Jesus had been crucified, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb where Jesus had been laid. When she got there, it was dark, but she could tell that the stone that had been placed in front of the tomb had been moved now this stone was heavy, and it would have taken a great deal of effort to move it. So she knew something wasn't right. She ran to the disciples' house, and when she got there, she said, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we don't know where they have put him. Well, the disciples were not happy about hearing this, so they ran to the tomb. And when they got there, Peter and John entered in, and they saw Jesus was not there. His body was gone. The cloth that had wrapped his body was there, but his body was not. They didn't know what to make of this, and so they left. But Mary Magdalene stayed. She was so upset. She was weeping. And when she turned back around to look into the tomb, she saw two brilliant angels standing inside. And they said to her, Woman, why are you crying? And she said, they have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we don't know where they have put him. She was upset, crying. And so when she turned back around, and she saw a man that was...
was Jesus. She thought it was the gardener. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you crying? Who are you looking for? And she said to him, Sir, if you have removed him, tell me where you put him, and I will take him away. Well, Jesus said to her, Mary. And as soon as he said that, she recognized him. She tried to hug him when she said, Teacher! But Jesus said to her, Do not try to hug me, Mary, for I have not yet ascended to the Father, my Father, and your Father, my God, and your God. But go tell the others this news. Tell my brothers what has happened. And so she did. She ran to the disciples, and she said, I have seen the Lord! I have seen the Lord! What good news this is! Jesus has risen! He has risen indeed! Welcome church family, my name is Oksana and I serve as the worship minister and what a joy it is this morning to worship together and celebrate the resurrection of Jesus Christ. He is alive, amen? Hear the word of the Lord from 1 Corinthians 15 where it says, Death is swallowed up in victory. O oh, death, where is your victory? O oh, death, where is your sting? The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. We have every reason to celebrate and sing this morning the good news of the gospel. Sing it out, living hope. How great the chasm that lay between us. How high the mountain I could not climb. In desperation, I turned to heaven and spoke your name into the night. Then through the darkness, your loving kindness tore through the shadows of my soul the work is finished the end is written we boast in him jesus christ my of our Lord Jesus Christ. According to his great mercy, he has caused us to be born again to a living hope 
through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from, a, from the dead to an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled and unfading, kept in heaven for you. That is great news. Let's sing of this. Наше живеш на небесах, нехай святиться ім'я Твоє, нехай прийде царство Твоє, нехай буде воля Твоє, як на небі, так на землі. Хліб наш щоденні дай нам сьогодні і прости нам провини наші, як ми прощаємо новаці наші. Мене не від спокусу, але визволи нас від лукавого. Бо Твоє царство, сила і слава навіки. Амінь. Let's sing out that he is our way maker. You are here moving in the midst. I worship you. I worship you. You are here, working in this place. I worship you, I worship you. You are here, 
he's working because his word says it even when we don't see it we know he's working because his word says so so wherever you're at this morning whatever circumstance oh church let us believe and trust and have faith in Jesus Christ for he is working amen sing this out with us even when I don't see it you're working even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Even when
reading in 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verses 1 through 8. Now brothers, I want to clarify for you the gospel I proclaim to you. You received it and have taken your stand on it. You are also saved by it if you hold to the message I proclaim to you, unless you believed for no purpose. For I passed on to you as most important what I also received, that Christ died for our sins, according to the scriptures, that he was buried and that he was raised on the third day, according to the scriptures. He that appeared to Cephas and then to the twelve, then he appeared to over 500 brothers at one time. Most of them are still alive, but some have fallen asleep. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles. Last of all, as to one abnormally born, he also appeared to me. Well, happy Easter again. Our text this morning is from John, the 19th chapter, the 30th verse. It says, When Jesus had received the sour wine, he said, It is finished. Then, bowing his head, he gave up his spirit. This morning I want us to consider what it is exactly that is finished. And first, I want to suggest that it's it's the dying that is finished, specifically Jesus dying. Now, like it or not, Jesus suffered. And we've covered that extensively over the last seven weeks as we have looked closely at the last seven sayings from Jesus on the cross. But many of us are suffering today as well. Whether it's from the coronavirus, COVID-19 uh, specifically, whether it's family and friends who are suffering from the virus, whether it is the fear that we, we may be affected by the virus in some ways, or perhaps it's the economic fallout from all that is going on. 16 million jobs have been lost in the last three weeks in our country. You know, some say that the, the deaths associated with COVID-19 are going to reach their peak today on Easter Sunday in our country. These are strange, strange times indeed. Suffering abounds. It's, it's the novelty of the virus. It's, it's the lack of antibodies, the lack of treatment, the the lack of a, a vaccine, it has, it has left people in a situation where they are utterly alone. It, it's, it's the manner due to this virus in which people die. And I, I don't mean through pulmonary complications. That's, that's common enough. I, I mean that people are dying alone. So, for instance, there's a, a woman who lives on Long Island three school-aged children. Her husband contracts COVID-19 COVID a few days ago and ends up dying from it. And she's forced to say goodbye to her husband over FaceTime as she plays their wedding song. 42 years old. Been married for 20 years. Again, three school-aged children. I, I was married at 22. There are countless nurses and doctors who are, are filling the role of surrogate pastors as, as people fighting the illness lie in bed in the hospital without having family and friends at their bedside or their own pastor. There, there are harrowing reports out of Italy where uh, the death was, was so much so fast that family members would literally be calling the hospital to check on their loved ones and find out in this phone call that they had already passed away because the hospital simply did not have time yet to call and notify the family. Indeed, COVID-19 is a, it's heinous in the way that people are being affected and dying alone so often. And in our text, we well, we find Jesus alone. 
And in this moment, when he is saying these words, it is finished. Part of what that means is that the dying is finished. Mercifully. Ironically, what, what else is finished is the, the very religious system that led Jesus to the cross, that rejected Jesus. And, and this system supported a, a stark delineation between that which is clean and that which is unclean. And it supported religious leaders who uh, acted as if they understood what was clean and what was unclean. This, this religious system supported harmful policies and, and equally harmful rhetoric that contributed to this clean and unclean narrative. And, and this religious system supported the idea that livestock could take the place of a heart surrendered to God. It, it, it's right there in the book of Leviticus from the, from the Torah in chapter 4. The text says, Then the Lord spoke to Moses, tell the Israelites, when, when someone sins unintentionally against any of the Lord's commands and does anything prohibited by them, and then the chapter and the next chapter goes on to explain that they should bring an animal to the priest, and that priest will take some of the blood from that animal and, it, and will sacrifice it to the Lord. And, and, and this will offer atonement for the sins committed. This would bring forgiveness. Well, it's finished means that no more livestock will be needed. Jesus saying it is finished means that there is no more clean and unclean. In the beginning of John's Gospel, John the Baptist testifies to this when he sees Jesus coming from a ways away. And he says, Behold, the Lamb of God who, who takes away the sin of the world. And, and this taking away the sin of the world, it's, it's once and for all. You, you need to know that you cannot do anything to make God love you more. You cannot do anything to make God love you less. There's, there's nothing to earn. There's, there's nothing to lose. The Lamb of God has taken away your sin. It is finished. From the moment that we enter the world, uh, our process of dying begins. And apart from Jesus, this dying, it does separate us from God. But it is finished means you don't have to be separated from, from God. Our dying can be finished too. Right now. If you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, if you believe in your heart that God raised Him from the dead, you will be saved from your sin. You will live forever with God. Your dying will be finished. As we turn our attention now to the time in worship that we, we dedicate this time every week to, to prayer, together to corporate prayer, to fixing our eyes on, on Jesus, um, to stilling ourselves, to confessing our sin, to thanking God for God's promises that we hold fast to, that we believe are true. So if you would get comfortable, put your feet firmly on the floor as you sit there um, in your own home, we're going to take a few moments and be silent. We're going to be still. Be still and know that I am God, the Lord says. Hear these words from John 14 from Jesus as we pray. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many rooms. If, if not, I would have told you. And I'm going away to prepare a place for you. If, if I do, I'll come again and take you to myself, that where I am you may also be.
as we pray, be reminded you are never alone. You are never alone. That where I am, you may also be, Jesus said. We were not made to be alone. God knows this. He created us. Satan knows this too. And Satan tries very hard to get us to do our own thing, to to be self-reliant, to be self-centered. Reject that. It is not what you were made for. Jesus said, you know the way to where I am going. And Thomas quickly spoke up and said, Lord, we don't know where you're going. How can we know the way? Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. You come to the Father through me. Through Jesus, we can come to the Father. Jesus modeled this for us even on the cross. So take another moment and let's come to the Father. Lord, hear our prayers. Fill us with your presence. Help us know we are never alone. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Good morning, church family. If you're visiting with us today, my name is Susan Foster, and I serve as the Discipleship and Missions Minister at Harpeth Heights. Happy Easter to you all. I'm going to say he is risen, and you respond with, He is risen indeed. Are you ready? He is risen. He is risen indeed. Not only is this the way that the early Christians greeted each other, but it also is the way that I have greeted you on the Harpeth Heights campus for many Easter's. You know, it's just a campus right now, just a building because the church is you. We, the people, are the church, and wherever you are, church can happen. When we give for our offering, we often give for God's work on missions around the world. I wanna share with you where some of that money is going and missions that is happening, and also encourage you that you can be engaging in God's work right where you are. One of the opportunities that we have is for people to go to Greece and they literally put shoes on the feet of refugees as they come into the shores. Some of you this week with gentleness and kindness have had to take shoes off of tired toddlers to put them down for their naps. And God is at work through you. There's opportunities to go to Brazil and be part of medical clinics and eye care clinics to give glasses to those who do not have them. Some of you this week have been looking for your reading glasses so that you can share the scripture with your family. There's opportunities to go to India and to help to build bathrooms for people with disabilities so that they can have the space that they need. Some of you this week have used your hands to be a part of disaster relief um, and helping to build from the tornado. God is at work and we, his people, are engaging in the whole gospel of Jesus Christ anywhere, anytime, with anyone. 
as our culture is shifting and there are unique opportunities right now to minister and to share the gospel, I encourage you to be about kingdom building and engaging in scripture, engaging in serving wherever you are the church. Would you pray with me, please? Father, I thank you for the way that you love us well, for how you made so many sacrifices, how you were willing to give your son for us, how you pursue us in having a personal relationship with us. Lord, I pray that we will give gifts out of our abundance and that we will use that to glorify you. Lord, I pray that we would be people who are known for engaging in your work and in your gospel. May we be people who share with others all around the world about your good news. I ask this in your name, amen. We invite you to sing King of Kings with us. In the darkness we were waiting Without hope, without life Till from heaven you came running There was mercy in your eyes To fulfill the law and prophets To a virgin came the word From a throne of endless glory To a cradle in the dirt Praise the
So what else was finished? Well, Jesus' project was finished. He, the project was clear. Uh, from the beginning, it had been testified to that God, through Jesus, would make everything new, would make everything right. The world would be rescued through the Messiah. Sin and its effects and death would be no more. The project was finished. In Luke chapter 4, Jesus gives some insight into what this project uh, was and, and would be. He quotes Isaiah 61 saying, The Spirit of the Lord is on me because He has anointed me to preach good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to set free the oppressed, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. And after Jesus quoted, from Isaiah 61, he, the text says, He then rolled up the scroll, gave it back to the attendant, and sat down. And the eyes of everyone in the synagogue were fixed right on Jesus. And Jesus said, Today, as you listen, the Scriptures have been fulfilled. The project was finished. The project was fulfilled. Or... When, when Peter, who was, who was ever the bold one, the bold disciple, in Matthew's gospel, in the Garden of Gethsemane, right at the time where Jesus was to be arrested after being betrayed by Judas, this is in Matthew 26, I believe, Peter pulls out his sword and he starts fighting. He chops one of the soldiers' ears off. And Jesus, rebuking that action, picks up the soldier's ear puts it back on the soldier's head and says, Stop fighting. Those who live by the sword, Peter, will, will die by the sword. And then Jesus goes on to say that, that the things that are happening, that are, that are leading to and, and culminating in His arrest and, and what would take place after that, they were happening so that the writings of the prophets would be fulfilled. And at this point in the story, the Scripture says, Then all the disciples, they deserted Him and they ran away. Man, they deserted Him. And from this point on in the story, Jesus is alone. So, so He said things like, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? He, he wanted to do God's will. He testified to that in the garden. He said, not my will, but yours be done, Father. But he sure would not have minded if it didn't include such, such desperation, such loneliness. Remember, Jesus was, was giving away in these moments all the way to the cross. He was giving away to God for you and me, what, the, what his accusers, what his killers thought they were taking from him. So saying it is finished lets us know that Jesus has done what he came to do. Last, and this is the best news, what is finished is pervasive fear and doubt. Now, Sure, we are going to have times of, of fear. We are going to have times of doubt. That is, that is natural. But it is finished means that it is completed. It is accomplished. It is perfected. You know, my wedding was a beautiful wedding. It really was. We had 12 bridesmaids and 12 groomsmen. <laughs> my wife is a, is a great friend. And so there, was a, there were quite a few uh, ladies who she wanted standing with her. And I, I had good friends too, and, and, and I asked some good friends to stand with me, but I think there probably were a few of my groomsmen who were a little surprised to be asked to stand there because 12 is a bunch. But, you know, it was a beautiful wedding. We, we had a lot of people there. We're both from here, and, and vows were said. They were meant. God was, was glorified. We had a really fun party afterwards. We, we rode away in a carriage. Uh, it, was, it was storybook in many ways. And I've loved being married to Leslie Ann since. 
but it hasn't all been storybook. And we certainly have not had people, you know, <laughs> cheering loudly for us along the way, cheering for us for sure, but not cheering loudly, not, not tossing rice on us all along the way. I am so grateful for my marriage, but I know that anything can happen. But I don't live each day wondering if Leslie Ann is going to, to stay with me, if one of us is going to, to leave the other. And I'm so grateful for that. And, and this analogy helps me understand how I process what exactly it is finished means when Jesus says it from the cross. It's, it's that fear is no longer justifiable. Sure, it can come, but it's not invited and it can't stay. I got to hear Brennan Manning, one of my favorite authors, speak before he passed away. This was about 20 years ago here in Nashville. Brennan Manning uh, suffered for a long time from from alcoholism, but he, he overcame that and he became such an inspiration to so many Christians as he honestly talked about his life with Jesus and, and, and who he understood his Savior to be. Truly, Brennan Manning's work has, has blessed me and I believe it would you too. He believed that, that when we stand before heaven's gates, and whatever that looks like, after we pass away or when Jesus returns to take us there, that when we stand before Jesus and, and have to give an account on our life and our love, that we will be asked one question. That Jesus will look us square in the eye and He will ask you and me, do you believe that I loved you? Do you believe that I loved you? Do you believe that Jesus loves you? I mean, do you really believe it? Because it is finished means there is nothing more for you to do. There's no more striving. There's no more fear. There is no more death. So I ask you, on this Resurrection Day, do you believe that Jesus loves you? Indeed, it is finished. Church family, may I invite you to take these next few moments to just meditate on what Pastor Brennan had preached and what the Lord has spoken to your heart. We want to give you what we like to call it some soul space. So take these next few moments. And as we close, let us respond in singing, only in Christ alone our hope is found. We have the greatest news to celebrate this morning. So let's sing this out. In Christ 
Church at Harpeth Heights. He is risen. My name is Jacob Bell and I get to serve with you all as the student minister. And if you feel led to respond to the gospel that you heard this morning, we would love to connect with you at harpethheightschurch.com slash connect. If you want to respond to the gospel, if you want to learn more about how to live on mission with Jesus, or if you're just looking for biblical community, come on. We would like to hear from you at harpethheightschurch.com slash connect. Will you pray with me? King Jesus, for this reason right now, I'm on my knees. That the people who have heard the gospel today would know the length, width, height, and depth of your love. And that they would be filled up with all of the fullness of God. Lord, I pray that they would know that you are the light and salvation during these times and all times. And Lord, that they would remember the great hope of the future glory we will see when we see your face. We love you, Lord. Amen. 
As we close our worship today, I'd like to read these words uh, written by Andrew Peterson uh, from his song, His Heart Beats. His heart beats. His blood begins to flow, waking up what was dead a moment ago. And his heart beats, and now everything is changed. The blood that brought us peace with God is racing through his veins. Indeed, Jesus lives, y'all. And it is our prayer today that because of this, you know that you are loved, that you are sent, and that you are never alone. Because you are a person in whom Christ dwells. And you are a person in whom Christ delights. And we are living in the unshakable kingdom of God. And that kingdom is not in trouble. So neither are we. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above ye heavenly hosts. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen.